Hi folks, welcome to another edition of Gold Bazan. A few months ago, we had the pleasure of interviewing Azed Alkmar's former sporting director, Ernie Stewart. What's interesting about Ernie is that he brought this fabulous player that has made such a huge name for himself in Europe and the Asian footballing community, Ariza Jahanbakhsh. We asked Ernie what he thought about Ariza and where he saw Ariza going, and as he quoted us in, in the interview, he briefly said that he believes he's going to be a world-class player someday. And today, we have the pleasure of and have the honor of actually having Yadriza Jahan Baksh on the pod today. A player that obviously needs no introduction um, in the Asian footballing community and making such a great name for himself in Europe. We appreciate Yadriza's time and we wanted to briefly thank Azad Akmar for giving us this opportunity to interview Yadriza. As always, we appreciate the support you've been giving us and we hope you enjoyed this interview. Enjoy. Hi folks, welcome to another edition of Gold Bazan. Today we're joined by the great Adiriz Ajahn Bash. As every football fan in Iran knows, he doesn't need an introduction. Adiriz, thank you for your time and um, we appreciate you coming on Gold Bazan today. No problem. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm also happy to join you guys. I hope we're going to have a nice interview uh, talking about football. Thank so yeah, here I am. So the first question we have for you, obviously your development in the Netherlands has been impressive. Could you tell us more about what makes this country such a great place to develop for young players and also on top of that, what's a big difference have you seen um, this country compared to Iran in terms of, you know, the football development of a player? Well, uh, since I came here, actually, I have learned a lot about football, about the uh, the discipline and the, the way uh, they uh, they teaching the football to the young players and the talented players and it's been incredible for me i mean i came here in the age of uh, 18 and uh, it's been really good for me uh, it was the right age for me to move to to europe and well uh, last two years i was playing in iran i was playing the first norwegian and in the uh, good good level of uh, iran competition but uh, yeah, there is a big difference. I mean, to comparing the uh, the material, the uh, the facility we have in Iran, and uh, what 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 I see here, and uh, I was doing the uh, exercises, trainings, and everything here is is a big difference. And about the discipline, and uh, well, uh, I don't need to say that because uh, you know, as you see in Iran, uh, all the rules and the things are making by one night to two nights and uh, one week but here you know already what you're going to do in the next couple of weeks so those are the big difference and then about the football about the tactics and because as you know we have got lots of good individual players in Iran but here you, you have to play most as a team and with your team players uh, the teammates uh, and well uh, those are the big difference between Iran competition and here and uh, I think that I think the biggest uh, biggest difference is the facility you have here in in, in Holland, and the, the facility is uh, just the uh, average things here. And uh, in Iran, we're still fighting to have uh, like balls and uh, having some uh, some really uh, really normal things. So those are the the biggest difference between Iran and here. I think. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, Alreza. Uh, you know. Uh, Last year you had a good year in the Europa League and came with a four and uh, after a while you, you lost to uh, Olympic Lyon. And uh, for this season, uh, Asset Alkmaar failed to qualify for the Europa League after the playoffs. So, uh, what's, the, what's the, your club's ambitions for this year and also your own ambitions and goals for this coming season? Well, as you said, uh, unfortunately we didn't make it to uh, Europa League this season, but uh, I think we did a good job last year. Uh, I mean, we we make it to uh, to uh, next round for the Europa League, and also we uh, we make it to uh, cup final, and also in the competition we were first five. Uh, so it's been a good uh, good year for us. But yeah, unfortunately, as you said, like the worst game was against Lyon away. Uh, uh, we lost 7-1 and uh, we lost the uh, cup final uh, and yeah, 
that the, those are the things that, that can happen in football. But for this season, we have got a different tactic. We have got the new trainer in our team, which he wants to play uh, with a different tactic. So uh, we're going to see what's what's going to happen. But I think we're going to have a better year than last year because now, as I said, it's, in one side, it's not really nice to don't play Europa League. But in the other side, we have last game, so we can concentrate on the competition and the cup. So these are the uh, goals, I think, for this season. And hopefully we make it uh, this uh, this time, uh, making that happen to becoming champion in uh, in cup. So, and also for myself, uh, well, it's a year of World Cup. Uh, so it's going to be a big challenge for me to, to show my uh, quality, to having better performance than last year. And hopefully end up... Uh, it's really good this season with uh, with AZ, and then in, in, in the end of the season, hopefully, to making uh, um, in the good shape uh, to follow World Cup. So that's uh, that's a goal for, for me, actually. Hey, Reza, before we get into the gist of talking about, you know, where, where do you see yourself in the future after AZ Alkmaar, or which league you prefer to play in? Could you please tell us briefly about? I know Nasser Hashimi Mogadam is like a second father to you. Um, if you could tell us more about the impact that he's had. On you, um, ever since you came to you know the Netherlands and the development, as you come through the ranks of even NEC, of how important of a figure has he been to you throughout your career so far? Well, uh, the relationship between us is is not about the agent and the player. It's like um, more than that. I mean, not only about the football. We we speak about the uh, even the things happening around football uh, in my life, uh, in just normal life, and the decisions which I make and I still have to make. So uh, yeah, it's been it's been incredible the cooperation between us, and I'm really happy with him and his family, and uh, they've been a really really important part in my life here in Europe. So since day one I came here, they were always there for me, helping me. Uh, out with the things and uh, well I'm, I'm really happy and I really appreciate what they have done for me and well uh, I appreciate God that I that I have them and I had them beside me here in Holland because they helped me a lot and uh, for the upcoming years for sure so yeah that, that, that's been uh, incredible I mean uh, well it's it's been it's been not easy for me to move from my country to here in Holland in such an age. Uh, so yeah, you know it's it's been really good between us. And well, as I said, I'm really happy to have him uh, beside myself. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, and we we're also happy that uh, uh, somebody is uh, what can we say uh, helping you to progress even outside the soccer field. It's important, you know, to to develop in Europe in different ways. Uh, and about uh, uh, living in Europe or now in in the Netherlands, uh, you we know that you are staying one more year in the Netherlands, but uh, there have also been some rumors of you leaving. Uh, the Netherlands, uh, you know, there, there have been some offers we heard about Premier League and so. Could you please tell us more about uh, these offers? Have you had any concrete offers that you had said yes or no to? And what's your contract situation with uh, us at Alkmaar today? Well, I actually can't tell anything about that because, uh, well, I have more concentration on football and uh, the things beside that is about... Uh, making decisions or all the offers which uh, which comes up. I have no idea about them, but the things I know is like I still have uh, three more years contract with AZ. And I'm really happy here, the, the people here uh, who are working and the uh, technical staff, the players, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy here and they are nice, nice people. And as long as I'm enjoying here, uh, you know, it's, it's okay for me to stay, but well, uh, in football, you never know, and yeah, we'll see what's going to happen in the upcoming, I think, three weeks. So uh, yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. But in the one side, I'm, as I said, I'm happy, and if I stay one more year here or even two more years, I don't mind. And that that's nice to be uh, a part of this team. So, uh, uh, what do you mean in the next upcoming uh, weeks? Uh, you you mean as long as the the transfer window is open, there there could be a possibility. Is is that uh, do I understand you you correctly there? Well, uh, nothing concrete happened. I mean, like uh, if there was any official offers or something, nothing happens until now. But 
you know, you never know. Probably something comes or even maybe nothing comes, you know, you never know. But uh, that's why I'm telling you, like, uh, upcoming three weeks, we'll see what's going to happen. But there is a more possibility, I think, that I stay than to leave. So that's the thing that I know until now. Okay, okay, thanks. Pasha, you can go on. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, um, Iran qualified, obviously, to World Cup with a really beautiful fashionable style. And you were a big part of this team. Um, could you please tell us what is the reason behind the success and how important of a figure has Carlos Kairos been for you? Well, I said that before, that uh, the people, the way we make it to World Cup, the people think it was really easy. And uh, Well, but as you know, it, it's always been a big challenge for us to make it to World Cup, qualifying and... Uh, you know, but uh, this time it was it was way easy for us to make it World Cup, and I think the main reason is the teamwork and the the uh, the relationship between players, between players and the technical staff and the the person who is as a head coach there, Mr. Queros. Um, he plays a really really big role. It's a uh, big role in our team, in national team, and since day one, uh, he always tell us to. Uh, Bring the flight of Iran uh, one step higher every day, every week, and every month, you know. And every single game we have to put 100%, doesn't matter if it's a friendly game or official game. And I think that those are the main reasons that we make it uh, in the best way uh, to the World Cup. And I think this was uh, the best qualification uh, ever for our country. And uh, now I think the uh, last two games are still really important for us. We go 100% to uh, to fight for six points and to make it the best way for the World Cup. So, uh, and afterwards, of course, the preparation for World Cup is also important. We have got a really young team and uh, the players, they need more uh, more experience to facing bigger teams to, to make it to the best way to the World Cup. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big challenge for us playing World Cup. Uh, and second time in the row, uh, so yeah, it's gonna be nice, I think. And the players are happy, and the cooperation is really nice. So I hope the federation and the, all the people who are involved helping us to make it to the best way. Yeah, and and that's an interesting uh, question because there's always this this talk about uh, the the federation or the lack of support from the federation. But now the federation itself and a lot of people have more or less demanded Iran to go to the second round in the World Cup. Um, so, how is that possible? And what kind of preparations do you want to see? for Iran having the possibility to go to the second round in the World Cup 2018? As I said, the way we, we, we qualify for World Cup, it's also the, uh, I think the expectation is higher from us now. So, uh, as you said, the people want us to uh, to make it to the next round for the World Cup, but that's not something easy, we know. But I think to having the better friendly games, to facing the bigger teams in the world, to uh, to to uh, to see uh, you know the quality of our team, because uh, yeah, World Cup is different thing uh, than uh, qualification. And if we face bigger teams and to to having more experience before World Cup. I think that helps us a lot because, well, last World Cup was, we had a good performance, but uh, that's not enough, I think. And as long as you don't win, you don't make it to, World, to the next round. So um, I think, yeah, obviously, we need uh, better games, uh, better friendly games, actually, and to, to having better preparation for the World Cup. I think that's all the, all the matter right now for, for our national team. Anyways, and then the next question we have for you is obviously the amount of players in Europe has been extraordinarily high, which is something absolutely remarkable for our country as itself. And hopefully you guys will be, you know, as a role model for future reigning players to take the role as you guys do. What is the main reason, would you say, that a lot of the reigning players are taking a stance in Europe? Is this something that Carlos Queiroz keeps telling you guys, or is this something that you feel like within the country, everybody feels like they should leave the country to for the player development? Um, what's the reasoning behind that, which, from your own personal perspective? Well, I think it's, 
I think the first reason is because of the Carlos Queiroz wants the young players moving to Europe. Because as I said, because of the facility and the way they're teaching football and uh, the way they can develop themselves in Europe is a big different than Iran. So that's, I think, the first reason. And second reason is we have World Cup. And uh, yeah, most of the players, they know that uh, the coach of national team, he rather to have the uh, European players, the actual Iranian players who play in Europe in national team. So I think these are the reasons which uh, the players, they decided to move to Europe. And I think that's a perfect thing because, well, you know, there's a limit in Iran. And uh, as long as you reach that level and that, uh, that limit, you, you have to move and you have to go even further if you have bigger ambitions and bigger goals in your, in your career. So I think those are the reasons which the young players, they want to move in Europe right now. Uh, yeah, and uh, we've seen a lot of uh, young people, and, and uh, we also believe that uh, you moving to Europe, and uh, despite going down with the uh, name again, you decided to stay and putting on a so-called uh, a really professional attitude. We we believe that you have a big part in that as well, and not only uh, Carlos Queiroz. Uh, but uh, uh, let, let's talk about uh, this. These games coming up now for the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, South Korea are really hungry and uh, uh, they, they, they're going for a win against Iran. And also we know that uh, playing against Syria could be really, really tough and hard. Uh, uh, how do you see these kind of games? Uh, is it, uh, do you think there should be young players giving a chance or should, uh, should we, Iran, play try something different because Iran is already qualified? Well, as I said, I think, uh, um, yeah, I think we go 100% for uh, these two games uh, unless we, uh, we, we qualified already for World Cup, but we, we still going 100% to, to get the six points and we know it's not going to be easy. To, to play against uh, South Korea there because last four or five games they lost against us and uh, it's been always special for them to play against Iran. We are first team in Asia and every team wants to beat us. So yeah, we know it's going to be uh, difficult but on the other side I think we go we go with uh, with uh, uh, every every player we need and, uh, with their I think uh, full selection which we, we've been together uh, last couple of games to get the three points there. And the uh, second game at home against Syria, uh, I think uh, we are even more hungry to play against them because they didn't treat us really good there in, the, in Kuala Lumpur, uh, the first game. Uh, and so now we, we have to give them back something. So that's, a, that's a playing a good football and uh, beat them at home. So the, for sure we go 100% to do our best uh, last two games. And to get the three, six points. Hi, Erza, we appreciate your time. And the final question we have for you is obviously, what is your ambitions for this season before the World Cup starts um, with us at Al Kamar? Well, uh, for me, uh, it's important to having a, a better year than last year, having better performance. And as I said, the year of World Cup is always important to being the good shape. Uh, uh, every single game being in the good, uh, being fit and uh, having good shape to to having better performance, and well, uh, and as I said, to end up uh, really good and end of the season, uh, uh, being uh, being able to play a, a good World Cup, and hopefully, uh, if 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 I'm there with a the team, to doing my best to helping national team. If I play, if I don't play, it doesn't matter. To helping national team to. Uh, to having the best results uh, and well as a statistic I, I would like to score more goals and having more assists because last year was better than the first season that I came to AZ and for sure this season I want to have a, a, a even better statistic and performance than last year so that's a goal for me this season. Yeah, we wish you all the best. We hope we reach your goal. I that we appreciate your time. It's an absolute honor to have you on. You're a great role model for the reigning football community. And we just appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. Of course, that's no problem. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. And just uh, uh, 
Well, there are a lot of people listening to this podcast and wants to, to uh, know if you have any message to Iranian players uh, or maybe both the Iranian players that are in Iran and want to play in Europe. What kind of advice do you have them? And also for the last question, or that maybe not the question, but uh, is there anything special you want to say to the Iranian football com community and all the fans following uh, you, following your team and following your national team? Well, uh, yeah, I think I'm, um, I, yeah, myself, what I think is uh, I'm too young to to talking and to having a recommendation for the other young players or something, but, <laughs> well, I wish them all the best and uh, I wish them to, to having the best performance wherever they're playing. And in the other side, uh, what I can say because of my experience last couple of years in Europe, I am telling them to move to Europe, don't be scared and uh, to taking the challenge. And uh, yeah, well, you know, if you, if you want to achieve something, you should pass the uh, difficulty. So uh, yeah, the first, probably first couple of months living in Europe uh, alone without knowing the language, culture and everything, it's going to be difficult, but You know, as long as you can adapt yourself and only think about your goals, your future, your ambitions and having better, a better career, making a better career and helping your family to having better life and all those things uh, can ha help you to to pass the, uh, the all the problems or the difficulty you have here in Europe. So uh, I'm telling them to, to don't be scared, as I said, and just taking the challenge and coming to Europe, uh, playing here, enjoying uh, the lifestyle, the culture, the, the discipline, the, the, all the respect they have here for the football players. And just move and uh, don't, uh, don't stand still there in Iran. And, uh, well, you know, you know they, they can earn a good money there, having a good lifestyle. And the people, they love football players there. But I think there is a limit in Iran. And when it's the right time, they have to move to Europe and to making better career for them, their, themselves. Thank you, Ali Reza. No problem, my friend. Thank you.